Hey YouTube, welcome to a comparison between the Canon EOS 200D and the Canon EOS 250D or Canon SL2, which is the Canon EOS 200D versus the newer Canon EOS 250D, which is the SL3. The SL3 is called in Japan, I think it's Canon X10 KISS. Both cameras are mainly designed for people who need a backup camera or for people who are just starting with a Canon DSLR photography. The price range is between 350 euro for the old version versus about 500 euro for the new version. In our review, we used the kit lens, which is the 18 to 55 millimeter. If you have no clue about lenses, I can recommend get this one in a kit version. It's quite affordable if you buy it together with the camera. But we also used this one here, that's the Canon 55 millimeter f1.8 SDM. And this big beast, that's the 70 to 200 millimeter lens, because you can attach all EF and EF lenses on both cameras. So let's get started. Inside the package of both cameras, you have the body itself, a carrying strap, the LPE17 battery with both cameras. But the major difference here is that with the new version, you can take up to 1600 photos. That's what I read in the internet. Whereas you can take about 800 photos with the old version, the SL2 or Canon EOS 200D. And of course, there's a user manual and of course the battery charger. The bodies, what can I tell you about the bodies? They feel cheap because they are made of plastic. However, they are pretty light, they are compact, they fit really nice in one sense, but Bear in mind, if you hold one body, it doesn't matter which one. If you have bigger hands, you probably have about two fingers floating in the air. And that's the same with the Canon EOS 200D or SL2. They weigh 450 grams each of them, so none of these cameras is lighter or heavier than the other one. And since they are so light, they are really good for traveling and if you're on a city trip, if you don't want to carry a lot of camera stuff with you, get one of these camera bodies, take the kit lens and the entire package, as you can see, is pretty small. On the lower side you have the tripod mounting where you can attach all kind of tripods to both cameras and the ones that we've been using in this review is also in the video description below. Next to it is the battery compartment with the memory card compartment as well. Our favorite SD card is also mentioned in the video description below. On the other side you have a port to attach an external microphone and a remote. On the other side where you hold the camera you have a USB port which is a mini USB port with the old version and a micro USB port with the newer version and HDMI. One thing you can't do with either camera is to charge it via USB. That's not possible but therefore you have the charger included with both cameras. Let's speak about the kit lens very quick. It's all right. It's probably the kit lens that feels the best out of every kit lens. The build quality is all right, you know, it's, it's made of plastic, yes, it has a plastic mounting here on the lower side, but it's doing a great job. If you need a filter, make sure to look for a 58 millimeter filter thread, otherwise it's too big or too small. The minimum focus distance on this lens is just 25 centimeters or let me see 0.8 feet. And as I told you, yes, it's plastic, but it's light, it's compact and it fits onto both cameras. But you can't attach it to any full frame camera out there if you may switch it to a full frame camera in future. If it's a DSLR like the Canon EOS 5D or 6D, that lens won't work. If you're looking for a blur background, that's probably not the correct lens. That's a nice lens for traveling and if you're on a city trip and for daily work. But if you consider getting a lens for a blur background, I can recommend you this one here, that's the 50mm f1.8 STM, mentioned in the video description below. You can attach all kinds of lenses. Some people say it's not true, but that's my opinion. If you buy a camera, which is not the most expensive one, but if you buy a really good lens, 
you can get pretty nice results as well. Both cameras are equipped with a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor. So it's not full frame, it's APS-C. 24 megapixel is enough for large printouts if you want to share these photos on Facebook, Instagram, if you want to do YouTube videos, 24 megapixels is way enough for all these kind of stuff. You will be able to take RAW and JPEG photos with both cameras. You may know that RAW photos contain more data and they are most of the time a bit bigger, but they allow you to do more in post-processing if you're familiar with, for instance, Adobe Lightroom. If you run your own coffee shop and you just want to have some great looking photos, just take them in JPEG, transfer them to your phone, upload them to Instagram, and therefore you don't need any kind of raw files at all. The codec, however, is a different one. With the new SL3 or EOS 250D, it comes with the new CL3 codec, whereas the old version still has the CR2 codec, and you can already see the difference that the dynamic range is much better on the new version than on the old version. However, the photo quality is great using both cameras. 24 megapixel is way enough for most people out there. The kit lens is doing a great job. However, I can still recommend get a second lens if you would like to have that blurry background, if you want to take some portrait pictures, or maybe if you're going into macro photography. We were for you in Frankfurt to take all kinds of photos. We were on a market, we were like in the city center, we, we took tons of photos. If you want, download them. The link is in the video description below. The very angle touch display is really nice once you would like to take a photo over a crowd on a concert or you need to go really close to the ground and you don't want to throw yourself into the mud. With the touch display, it's really easy to control the camera so you can run through the menu. You can also set the focus or use the touch shutter release function. However, the monitor of the SL2 or EOS 200D is slightly bigger than on the new version, but in real life, you don't really see the difference at all. The autofocus system on both cameras is doing a great job. However, you have more focus points with the SL3 or EOS 250D in live view. You will notice that once you're in live view and you would like to take a video or a photo and you use your finger to focus that there are many more points with the new version than with the old version. However, you can take up to five photos a second. Don't expect too much. The buffer gets quite busy after taking five to 10 seconds in RAW plus JPEG. You probably can take unlimited amount of photos if you record in JPEG only and if you have a fast writing memory card. The focus tends to get a bit slower once it's dark outside. On the new version, the SL3 or EOS 250D, you can take now a video using the eye autofocus that tracks your eyes at all times, which is nice if you would like to record yourself. Let's speak about controllability very quick. If you're new with Canon photography, really nice and simple. The menu is structured. It has different colors for each section. If you would like to change the ISO, just tap on the ISO button. If you would like to change the shutter speed, use that dial here on top. If you would like to change the aperture, tap on the AV button and use that dial here on top to open or close the aperture. You can go into the menu using all these kinds of buttons here or use your fingers to scroll through the menu via the touch display. And everyone loves blur backgrounds, but most of the people out there don't really know that it's all about the correct lens in combination with the camera sensor. The bigger the sensor of your camera is, the more expensive probably your camera is as well. And if you now use a lens with a fast aperture, that means the number is really small, the more blur background you get. But to get that blur background, you don't need to spend 1500 bucks on such a lens. You can also spend 100 bucks on that small lens here, which is listed in the video description below. And what you will be able to do using either a really expensive lens or a really cheap lens with a fast aperture will be seen now.
One feature I really enjoyed was the time-lapse feature. You can take a time-lapse movie straight out of the camera without the need for any post-processing. The major difference between both cameras is that you can take a time-lapse in 4K or Full HD using the SL3 or AS 250D where you can take only Full HD footage using the EOS 200D or SL2. You just choose an interval, let the camera do its work and then you get a time-lapse movie straight out of the camera which looks like that. However, there's one thing I have to mention. In 4K you have a really huge crop factor. I think it's 1.75 times your focal length and as you can see the difference between a Full HD movie and a 4K movie looks like that. Let's continue with a video recording. Since the SL3 or EOS 250D features now 4K video, that's probably the first DSLR which is so small that features 4K video. And it does feature also eye autofocus which worked really nice in our review, especially during daylight conditions. However, taking videos in 4K will still give you that crop factor like seen on the time-lapse mode. The SL2 and the SL3 can take full HD footage with up to 60 frames per second. If you don't see 60 frames per second and instead you'd see only 50 frames per second, that's time to go into the yellow menu, go to video format and change from NTSC to Paul or vice versa to see different frame rates. Unfortunately, you can't take any slow motion videos since the maximum frame rate is only 60 frames per second. You would probably need like 100 or 120 frames per second and that's not possible in 720p either. Color grading is not really possible because none of these cameras feature C-Log. However, the final video quality is pretty nice, I would say. It depends also mainly on the lens you're using and enjoy these scenes that we took in Frankfurt. internal microphone of the Canon SL3 or EOS 250D. One major difference between the Canon EOS 200D or SL2 and this new version now the SL3 or EOS 250D is that the new version has an eye out of focus so the camera always tries to keep one of your eyes in focus and that seems to work quite nicely. Last topic for this review is the low light performance. So how do these cameras perform in hours of darkness? Till ISO 6400 both cameras are doing a great job. I mean you can already see some grain on the final image whereas the limit is at 51,200. Let's be honest, most people out there probably take some photos for Instagram, Facebook, share them with friends or store them on their computer. That's why ISO to most people don't really matter at all. If you take your photos at ISO 1600, you don't see any grain at all. But once you push the ISO to 3200, 6400, of course you start to see some grain. And as I told you at the beginning of the low light performance topic, till ISO 6400, really nice results. And if you're considered taking photos for Instagram, Facebook, it doesn't really matter. You can push the ISO till 12,800, 25,600, because if the people are watching your photos, on a screen which is like that size, it doesn't really matter. They don't see the grain at all. But in my point of view, really good results, even for that price segment. Make sure if you don't want to push the ISO too far, get a lens with a fast aperture like the 50 millimeter F1.8. F stands for aperture or a Sigma lens, which is this one here, a 35 millimeter F1.4 which also gives you more blur background. Let's summarize. In my point of view, there's no benefit of buying the old version, except if you can't purchase the new one. Neither camera is equipped with GPS or a second memory slot to back up your files. 
but that's not what I'm expecting in that price segment anyways. You can use the Wi-Fi to auto backup your files, but therefore you only backup your files in JPEG and not in RAW. I mean, both cameras, they are in the lower price segment. They feel cheap since they are made of plastic. However, it's about the final result and that's pretty good using both cameras in terms of photo quality, in terms of video quality, in terms of handling, they're both doing a fantastic job. If you need 4K video, if you need an eye out of focus system, if you need the new CR3 codec, get the SL3 or Canon EOS 250D. If none of these mentioned terms mean anything to you, save the money get the SL2 or Canon EOS 200D. And one major advantage of the new version is the improved battery performance, which is pretty good. You can take more than a thousand photos, whereas with the old version, only about 800 photos. The battery is the same, but it's just the better performance of the new camera that saves you some battery life at the end. But I can still recommend get a backup battery anyways. So if I would decide today which camera I would buy for myself, I would definitely get the new version. I know it's slightly more expensive than the old version, but you never know what's gonna happen in future. Maybe you find it interesting to record videos, then you would be able to take 4K footage using this one. Maybe you're bored of landscape photography and you would like to take now video blocks, then get this one with the eye out of focus does a pretty good job. You can use all EF and EFS lenses, so make sure to get the correct lens for the stuff you're doing. The link to both cameras is listed in the video description below, so as to all the lenses we used and the external microphone I used during my vlogging test. Thanks for your support, all the best from Frankfurt and as you might know, if you have any further questions, make sure to post a comment below and you find lots of examples also in the video description, really on the bottom.